Today is a day where I go against the grain. That is to say, I go against an idea that I had. One that I held on to for maybe longer than necessary. Maybe to prove a point. Maybe to justify a means. I have been making these videos for nearly a year, and almost every single one of them I used my Fujifilm X-E4. I bought this camera for the sole purpose of keeping the cameras I use for work alive and well. Today is a day where I left my Fuji at home. I even left my Digicam at home. And this was no accident. Today is a day where I went against my previous decision and brought out my Sony A7C. A camera that I think was built for street photography much in the same way as Fujifilm has become the popular choice amongst many modern street photographers. If you didn't know already, the Sony A7C is, as far as I know, the smallest and or most compact full-frame mirrorless camera on the market. At least the smallest with interchangeable lenses. This makes this camera discreet and almost pocketable with a small lens which is what I brought. I brought the Sam Yang 45mm f1.8 with me. It's small, sharp, and unassuming. The perfect street photography lens. A 45mm lens is what's known as a normal lens. This has a few definitions, but to put it most plainly, a normal lens is one that has a field of view that appears nearly the same way as we view the world. Two of the most popular focal lengths are 35mm and 50mm. You'll see these regularly across the board. It is more rare, however, to find lenses in between those focal lengths. This 45mm lens is barely talked about and I believe it deserves so much more acclaim. However, this is not a camera review, nor a lens review. This is a singular experience of one photographer sharing his photographic journey on a cold winter day. I am often torn on how I want to edit my photos. There's a part of me that wants realism, but another louder, more convincing part of me that wants to lean into something more stylized. I think that line of thinking right there is what got me into Fujifilm to begin with. Fujifilm offers an elevated look to your photos without a whole lot of work. But they don't have a monopoly on elevated editing. With a little practice and a little play, you can achieve that type of look yourself with practically any camera that you own. I think a lot of the appeal of using a Fujifilm camera is that it does a lot of the work for you. It gives you that film-like image without having to learn how to use film. It allows you to experiment over and over without the fear of messing up one of the 24 or 36 photos you have on a roll of 35mm film. With that line of thinking, if you can get past not having the coolest looking camera, and Fujifilm does have the coolest looking cameras, you can get a Fuji-like look without needing a Fuji camera. Now, I want to confess that this is not a scientific nor even a technical position. This is one photographer who had a little time on his hands with a simple goal in mind, and that goal was to take photos that feel like a Fujifilm simulation without using a Fujifilm camera. Eventually, I intend on making a tutorial, how I edit my photos to feel less digital or something like that. But for now, I want to encourage people to use the cameras that they have or have access to. This includes your phone, your friend's camera, whatever. I know there is a lot of hype around using Fujifilm and while they are fantastic cameras, they're not the only camera system that can take the kind of photos that you want. For those interested, I'll leave some of my basic Lightroom adjustments at the end of the video, 
which are adjustments that can be made in practically any photo editing software. The important thing is to not be discouraged. If you watch my videos, you'll see that it's all about getting out there and experimenting. Whether you're using a $20 Digicam or a $6,000 Leica, you've got to get out there and take photos. Anyways, before you go chasing after a look, I think it's more important to find out what that photo looks like before it has a look, meaning your framing and composition. You don't need to overthink your camera or settings until you've got that down. From there, just mess around a bit in your editing software. You'll be surprised how quickly you come up with your own look, and you'll end up making your own presets for your own looks. Once again, I want to thank you for following along. It would mean a lot if you would like and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, until next time, adios.